Hey everyone, welcome back to Fast Charging for our next episode, which is like 9 million, because we've 76. done so many. 76. 76. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. 76, that's the number. So, yeah. seven, well, yeah, seven, seven minute yeah, abs, that's yeah, the number. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, six is welcome crazy. back. <laughs> yeah, today... I'm Bear. Yeah, you know I'm who Bear. that is, right? Yeah, I'm that's Brian. Brian. So today, today we're going to be... Go yeah, ahead. Oh, oh, yeah. I thought I was doing the intro. Well, you did the, enough of it. I can help you out here. Today we're talking about Lucid and is it going to survive? There might be an issue or two. Bear, uh, what, uh, what, uh, what's going on here? What's going on? What's going on? Well, there's a lot going on. And it looks like it's a real genuine demand problem, which was uh, put forth uh, back in uh, for, I think, I'm going to say for quarter three and quarter four earnings was... It was a logistical problem that they couldn't get these things uh, shipped out quick enough. That's what we were told. But now it, it's really seeming more and more, and I could be wrong. I'm not saying anything that I'm going to say is the truth. Uh, but it does seem like they have a, a, de a demand problem. They can now so produce I'm, the cars. I'm and, looking at this video of yours dated uh, yesterday. Yeah, uh, and hmm. yeah, on the 20, uh, whatever yesterday was, the 28th. Sounds kind of uh, current. Yeah, well, that's because we shot this yesterday when it was today's video. And I'm seeing quite an ocean of lucids parked out in the hot, hot desert sun. What's going on here, man? Okay, let's not make this seem like it's really hot here. And cars are made to sit outside. So right. Not really. So I was being um, dramatic. I know. Let, yeah. Uh, let's not be a 15-year-old girl, okay? I've got one of those. Okay. Locked up in the basement. Oh, dear. Yeah. Well, she, she didn't do her homework. Fair so, enough. yeah, there are, there are a lot of lucids. There have been a lot of lucids. And we are seeing uh, spots empty up as we go around the factory. Let's find a, a spot where we can see more of these lucids. Uh, you can shoot up to, and I don't mean that, like, drug-wise. I mean... Good. Good. Move, move over to about 345, and we can uh, start seeing. Yeah. Uh, well, it looks like, actually, we're going to take a look at the farm first. We're mm -hmm. just check, checking our boundaries. Sure. Uh, and we can start to see the rows and rows of cars. It, it does appear that some of the cars are starting to disappear. There are more holes because this whole area from, I'm looking at from 409. Uh, we've got a first parking lot. Uh, it's full of lucid airs. And we've got some empty spaces. Uh, and then after the second row of palm trees or third, those are all lucid cars. Those are not employee cars. That's not other people parked there. Those are all brand new lucids. And it's been like this since uh, late, late last year. And these cars are just stacking up. But we do take a close look at them every once in a while. And we do see that some of the cars are brand new um, and we can tell just because of how much dirt is on them. So they're taking cars out, they're replacing them, but not as fast as you would think. Uh, I, I, I tend to I tend to believe that a lot of these cars don't have reservations on them anymore. There's been a lot of theories that these cars are going to Saudi Arabia, that these cars are meant for something else, that they're having problems shipping them out. But there's no reason why some of these cars have been sitting here for that long. Because a rough estimate of how many cars are on site right now is probably 25, 2,600 cars. Oh, no. That's... Oh, no. Yeah. And being that their, their sales number for, uh, I think, the first quarter or for last quarter was less than that, there's no reason why these cars should be sitting here. Unless they can't get truck drivers to deliver them. But I find that really hard to believe. Um, I, I, at this point, I find it really hard to believe that it's either they can't find truckers or they were having uh, PDI issues, which is what was said originally. PDI logistic problems, pre-delivery inspection. Um, so, so that's so, 300 to $500 million worth of cars sitting there. Yeah, or you could call it a quarter of a billion to a half a billion dollars worth of inventory. Insane. Uh, yeah. So, so we've got some, they some gotta go. here. 
Yeah, we got some links here. Let's start with some good news. Join us as we sit in with the Lucid Air Sapphire's development engineers as they tweak the 1200 power, uh, horsepower plus tri-motor Air Sapphire. If you're looking for something that's comfy and super, super fast, this is it. This is it. But if you're looking at this, like you need something super fast and super comfortable, you better got you better have a lot of super money in your wallet. Because at a quarter of a million dollars, this car does not come cheap. Boy, I tell you, <clears throat> I would rather have a Plaid, a Y, and a 3 for less money. All of them, together. Together. I'd rather together. have a Plaid and a Taycan for less money. Mm-hmm. It's, I mean, there will be a couple buyers, but this is not going to save the company. I'm, it's great that they're able to use their racing pedigree to make something truly amazing, but it's pointless if you're not going to be around in two years to fix it. Yeah. I think the introduction of this car uh, would be classified as too soon. Too, too soon. soon. Yeah. Too soon. Too soon. Uh, or too late. If it was their very first car, who knows? But it's not. Yeah, and I'm not sure that... Uh, I don't think it would have worked as a first car. Um, do you remember how much the Model S cost when it first came out? Because I don't. I don't, but I want to say 150. It was quite, quite high. It might have only been 110, but I don't remember now. Okay. Uh, but it had at one point the price dropped to 69,420. We know that. For the long range, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I mean, the car, the Lucid Air, is a very nice car. I'm, I'm not going to knock almost anything on the car except for the ingress and egress is kind of awkward. Um, but it, it's a nice car. All right. But a quarter of a million nice. I, I got to be in a Bugatti for, or, or I don't know. I don't know what's comparable in price. Um, Cause I don't car shop. So I, I wouldn't know. Boy, it looks like it was never 150. It was always less than that. That's okay. Boy, that's crazy. So, uh, Yahoo's got an article here. <clears throat> Lucid Motor stock is falling. What's going on? Well, I think we know the answer. There's rumors of uh, layoffs, which we'll get to next, but uh, they're cutting 18% of the workforce. Yeah, it's... And as we just said, they can't, they can't move the cars. It seems like they're in a very competitive space. Luxury EVs. Mercedes has one. Porsche has one. Tesla, depending on your definition, has several. Uh, everybody has got a luxury EV. These are tough to move. Yeah. And I, I personally, I, I've got my opinion on what the problem is. And I, I, I think I'm, I'm probably the smartest guy in the room right now. Certainly the on, on Lucid you are. Yeah. Well, no, in my room. Oh. I don't, well, I don't mean okay. I'm not in, in your room. I mean, my, Andre the Giant's behind you. I think he might uh, have you beat. Uh, he, he, he's dead, though. Oh, well, that's, yeah. you got he that died. going for you. Yeah, I, I'd like to think I'm smarter than most dead people. Um, <laughs> so, there's, I, I think it's all about a, a price point issue. And the fact that they price themselves out of the market uh, for these cars. $159,000 is a lot of money for a car. I don't think if they were at uh, volume production, meeting the factory's maximum capacity, the first factory that is complete, of 30,000, I don't think they could sell 30,000 cars at $159,000 each. No. I mean, no. I mean as, as a comparison, look up S-Class sales for Mercedes, a company that's been around for 100 years. They... Do it. Do it now, Brian. Do it. I, I've um, done it before. I think I know the answer is 90000 globally. Yeah. So for them to think that they can pop in and and, and get those kind of sales and, and take them from a manufacturer like Mercedes, yeah, they're going to get some people from Mercedes. There's no doubt about it. But if Mercedes can only sell these cars that are cost $150,000 and they can only sell 90000 of them, how do they think they're going to jump in and and sell this this many these many cars? 
I don't know the proper English for that. At that price point, they needed to come in a little bit lower. I think uh, I, I heard Peter Rawlinson in regards to these layoffs uh, made a big speech about how they need to pump this out and, and boost the sales and the image of the car. Everywhere I go and every single day, Lucid is putting out tweets. I see ads. They're constantly hyping this car up. And I see it all over the place, everywhere I go. So I don't think they're failing on that part. I think they're failing on the price point. And if they sure. want to sell the, sell these cars, they they need to be able to make them for cheaper and sell them. And they will sell them for cheaper. It, it's it's too much. It's too much. Once you're getting past that hundred hundred thousand dollar price point, people really start to get a little skittish, especially people who are Model S buyers. You, you've got people who buy a Model S. It's just under a hundred, and they can and they can probably barely afford it. That's still a uh, hundred thousand dollar car is still going to be like a fifteen sixteen hundred dollar a month payment. Actually, probably more with interest rates going having gone up. And I'm just basing it on on my loan is fifteen fifty, but that was before our rates went up. Now you get people that can still afford the Plaid and they're going to get it. They want that that plaid sticker and the speed that they'll never use. That's great. Uh, another $30,000. But now you're talking about another $30,000 on top of that. I know it's a nice car. I'm not doubting it. But but 10 years ago, this is so you could probably buy a couple of supercars at that price, right? There's probably something available for $159,000. There were times when, yeah, Lamborghinis were 150. Yeah. So yeah, and global sales of the of the S class is eighty seven thousand, and as nice as the Lucid is, it's no S class. It, it is not. It is not an S class, and I don't know when the last time you were in one, um, but I I've been at the Mercedes dealership lately, and you look inside them, and you're like, my God, this is beautiful. I mean, yeah. it's exquisite design. I mean, it's too bad that the dash will be peeling in three years, and other things will stop working, but they they look great. And you know who knows how Lucids are going to be in three years. But Mercedes, they tend to fall apart. But they are beautiful cars. People love them. And, and when I, they're new, they're extremely luxurious and oh, comfortable. Yes. yes. And, and until the air bladders and the massage sheets stop working. And the suspension air. Ooh, oh, those are God, a that, thousand that's bucks a, a wheel. Yeah, that is that is a big one. Mm -hmm. um but yeah. needless so, to say they, yeah. it, to me it's all about price point they're they price themselves out of the market they're going to come out with the gravity and they're going to come out with the high-end one first and they're going to make some sales and then they're going to have trouble selling them and then they're they going to they make can't the... get down to the eighty thousand and under price mark mm -hmm. i i just profitably i don't see a path Lucid to lay off 1,300 employees in restructuring, including executives, but not Peter. No, not Peter. Oh, that that would be interesting if it turned out it was Peter. Yeah, it would be something. They've also lowered their 2023 annual production target to 10,000 from uh, 14, 000, 10 to 14, oh. roughly half of the 20 to 22,000 deliveries analysts had expected. Oh, 10, who cares? Uh, I'm going to say, who cares what the analysts expected? Yeah, I don't. But I don't care. There, there's the ten thousand, dude. That's... Yeah. That, uh, okay, let's put that into a little bit of perspective. They have a quarter of those cars sitting in the parking lot. Yes, yes. That's why they can lay off so many people. Is we don't need the factory running at any steam. We've already got too many. You're you're 100 right on that. They don't. Um, I don't see I, the path, man. I don't see the path. You know, there was a, a recall that affected at least 237 EVs that could suddenly lose power. I call this no issue. This is not the problem. This happens and it is easily fixed. I will move past that one. Uh, it's a blah 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 article. Blah blah blah. I've got my, uh, my I've got a plug-in hybrid that is going into the shop tomorrow to get a uh, a recall done for suddenly losing power. 
Did, did you see that anywhere? No. No. And I only found that one because I was digging for articles on Lucid for the sake of this. I'm sure if we were doing an article about that vehicle, I would have found it. Uh, so this next one, though, on... Who is this? Roden Truck? I don't know. Autoblog. Autoblog. They're, they're... Yeah, the cons. It ain't cheap. Software glitches. Questionable reliability as a first-time car maker. But really, it ain't cheap. That should just be the whole headline. Because everything has a price. And if you were to... If the price was right, this car would sell like hotcakes, and it ain't selling. Yeah, I, I, okay, uh, it, geez, I just can't get over the whole, why don't they see that it's a price point? What can they sell them at? Because at this point, if, um, if they can sell them and break even, get all those things off the lot, get all that cash back, and get the car out there and get it popular, get, that's, that's what people want to see, not ads. So those are the things that'll make a difference. Yeah. Their showrooms are so beautiful. And so they speak to a lifestyle of luxury and premium everything. What they don't speak to is selling cars. So I'm looking at the Lucid stock performance over the past year. And it is uh, down 72%. But a lot of tech stocks have been pretty hammered over the past year. A lot of stocks just generally have been hammered. But what my takeaway there is, is $7.55 a share too low? Or is it just right? Or is it too high? Because that leaves you with a market cap of $14.9 billion. Is Lucid worth $14.9 billion? Bear, I sent you a list of mm -hmm. automakers by market cap. Let's go down to the $15 billion-ish range. Um, and you'll see Nissan is worth $14.5 billion. Is Lucid worth as much as Nissan? Is Lucid worth more than Subaru or Volvo? You know, this was a big problem a couple of years ago. With Tesla being valued at what it was, it made you go, how are they worth that much more? And they're still worth almost $600 billion, which is, they're, they're worth three times what Toyota's worth. And with a fraction of the production and sales. So it, it makes you wonder where these cars are, the car companies are coming in with these incredibly high valuations. So when Nikola came out, they went to $90 in incredible valuations. Uh, Lucid was the same thing. Rivian, where's Rivian on this list? Uh, it's, it's there, it's at number 30. 30, yeah, I mean, remember Rivian stock was literally, uh, what like 12 or 13 times what it is now it's at 1296 it had gotten into the 170s and yeah. i i looked at that and i said there's no way this company is worth this and was able to unload my shares right at that point uh within a few dollars of, of max i one of the ones i got lucky with um but it, you really got to put these things into perspective i mean how is lucid worth uh, about the same amount as Nissan. Well, I mean, I understand yeah. Nissan's not in great shape, and people are they're they're valuating the, these new startups based on what they think they can do. Sure. But, but I don't, at this I point, don't know Lucid is Lucid. not proving that. No. So Mazda and Mitsubishi combined are worth less than twelve billion. So, yeah, and, that's cool. and we're going we're going back to a company that is only going to says that they're only going to make 10,000 cars. I think they lowered their production numbers to save money. And mm -hmm. also because the demand is not necessarily there. Why build cars and put them in the parking lot? One of one of my questions that I've asked my viewers numerous times of something that didn't make sense to me is why were they still putting out these cars that didn't have reservations and just letting them sit in the lot? And that, that's when I was just going, if they don't have buyers for these cars, why are they building them and just trying to sell them online? Uh, if you get an order for one, you could, there's no reason why you can't get that built in two weeks and, and sent out. But when you're going to, you have a product that's $150,000 and you're going to build one and hope that somebody buys it, you're not filling up dealership lots, you're filling up your parking lot. 
And it, I it, thought they had a strategy. I thought when I saw the backlog, if it wasn't reservations, then, oh, maybe we're about to see a price cut that's going to kickstart the next wave of, of deliveries. But it is not happening. Yeah, it's it's not. And I think they uh, should have, once they were running into, uh, they fulfilled all their grand touring orders and then their touring orders. Uh, they should only have made cars that had orders at some point. They should have said, let's stop building these cars and let's uh, let's get to the next model where we have actual orders and we can get them, get them delivered. Uh, it just took them a long time to get the pure ready, but apparently they probably didn't have the parts. They didn't have the materials to, to make the pure, so they had to wait. And then they, but they just kept building cars that are sitting there. And I'll be honest with you, I, I see Lucids now um, on the road. I've seen uh, a few. I've only seen them in California, and mm, I think I've only seen them in California. Yeah. Well, and sure. I mean, I see one at the parking garage where I have all my cars, because there's always one there. Um, it's the one that that guy took off road. <laughs> so I see that one almost on a daily basis, yeah, but I still see others. Uh, I'll see a couple a week. Um, but getting the car out there at a lower price and having them be common and people seeing them and start to envy that it's free advertisement as opposed to this constant, what I'm going to just call nonsense that lucid puts out. With we now have this model, we have the stealth model, we have the sapphire model. We're coming out with the pure model, and we've got this and that, uh, and oh, now we have Dream Drive, and you know what? That's all good stuff. Uh, but one, I don't want to hear about it during the earnings call, because that's what they spent half the earnings call talking about how superior they are to everything. Not what an the earnings call should not be a, a an an advertisement. Give us the facts. Give us the numbers. What what are you doing to fix the things that aren't right? Um, stop coming out with these new models. If they come out with if they come out with one more new model, all right, in the next three months, I'm going to sell all my shares for what it, whatever it's worth that day. Because I, I, that will tell me that I'm now I'm, I'm already 99% convinced they're doing the wrong thing uh, with this. But final they, nail. Yeah. They, they, so. They, they talked about it today, just getting people more aware of the car. Get them on the road. We're aware. So uh, let's jump back over to your video. I'm looking at it here, and I'm pointing out the original part of the factory, which has done all the production so far. And then next to it, we've got this vast, vast prairie of new building. And from looking in the access points, it doesn't have concrete yet. Um, the expansion. Yeah. Oh, I know what we're talking about. What the um, I'm at 643 on the video. 643? Okay, let's go to that. 640. Are oh, you talking about right um, in, in the, the little, intersect? Yeah, right at the edge of the building where the building's juncture. That's that's dirt inside, my friend. That That is dirt right there. Um, is anything going on in here? What is the plan? Is this where they're going to build an SUV that costs so much people can't buy it? Yes, that's where they're going to uh, build the SUV that people can't afford. That is correct. That is insanity. So one right. reason Tesla had a, a valuation uh, larger than Toyota is because, yes, they make a fraction of the vehicles, but in some quarters they make as much profit as Toyota. And Toyota is, at the end of the day, just a car company, while Tesla has grander aspirations that are already producing revenue, like stationary storage. Uh, and they're pushing Insur autonomy in ways, insurance, solar, solar. energy, yeah. batteries. Yeah, yeah. They're, doing, they're doing a lot of things that the others aren't. And I agree that a company that's, uh, go that's growing has potential to be worth more than it is today, where, while a company that's falling, not so much. Mm -hmm. And a Toyota, at least to me, appears to be on the wrong track in terms of their, in terms of their transitional strategy to cleaner energy. Yeah, um, they're, yeah they're, they're talking about changing their, with their new CEO, is 
is uh, pulling Toyota's head out of its own hiney hole, which is good. Toyota's got another problem. Um, their sales numbers are down, and the reason their sales numbers are down is because they can't produce cars. And I don't know why, but their car lots are empty. Um, mm. I, I've been to numerous of them in the last couple of weeks, and there, it, there are no new cars for sale. There, you might find uh, like a Highlander XSE, which is the high end model. That car doesn't sell in five minutes. A Highlander LE, it's sold before it, before the wheels hit the ground. Wow. Um, there, so there's a, a serious lack of, uh, of production, and that's got to be hurting them, uh, because every car is already sold. That every car that comes in is almost sold right away. I'm on a waiting list for any car that it, uh, two different dealerships will sell me at MSRP. And I've got one dealership that will sell it to me at MSRP, but the cars have already been spoken for. So, wow. and they're also jacking up the price for other people. So uh, Toyota's got to fix that problem too. Sure. Well, I am, am out of time. So I want to thank my patrons for hanging out with us. I want to thank your patrons for hanging out with you, I guess. Uh, and in the comments, let us know what did we miss? What do we misunderstand? What is your prediction for Lucid? And if it's a bad one, uh, give me a date. I'd like to hear the date that Lucid closes up if you oh, think that's what's going to happen. A in death them date, huh? Yeah, a death, death watch. Date. Death watch. All right. I, I personally don't feel like they're going to go under anytime soon, but they do have to make some major corrections. And my thinking, as I might have said over the last couple of uh, moments, is price, price, price. Price, price, price. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Bear. And we will catch you guys uh, next week or in a few days. Who knows, man? Thank you, y'all. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.